Adventures in Mortuary Archaeology and Commemoration. It's Archeo Death. Now, the last few weeks have seen some terrible and tragic events in the news, and the Black Lives Matters movement um, has taken a whole new dimension to it following the tragic death of George Floyd. Um, all that, that is known and has been reported on in the press, and many an academic has commented as part of their um, profile on the unfolding protests in the UK and the toppling of one statue, the removal of certain other statues, and the broader debate about our historic environment and how we commemorate the lives of past individuals and broader aspects of British history, including its colonial history, including black history, within the landscapes of this island or the United Kingdom more broadly, or these islands even broader still. Now, um, I can't comment on every aspect of this, and I don't really feel confident uh, on a whole series of uh, its dimensions, but I, I do feel I have some expertise in memorialisation and um, mortuary monumentality. And in that regard, um, recently, having uh, established both a YouTube channel, which you're watching, and a TikTok channel, I decided to try and use TikTok as the medium to address aspects of this debate. And so what I did as an experiment, because I haven't done this before, um, is to record 12, and I ended up having an extra one on the end, but the idea was to do 12 60 second or so videos, which is the limit on uh, TikTok, and use them to drill down some of the issues and debates about the current and future aspects of statuary um, and commemoration of perhaps problematic, complex personalities in the British landscape, and to also counter some of the rhetoric that we should be um, perhaps worried that war memorials in particular would be targeted by Black Lives Matter um, activists and the Top of the Racist website in particular. And I try to address those aspects. Now, I'm not saying that I perhaps hit the right tone, or and I'm sure there'll be plenty of people with criticisms to make, but of what I say. But I would emphasise that uh, if we're going to move forward with debating um, our historic environment and the memorials within it, something I've addressed multiple times on my Archeo Death blog, not specifically in terms of the issues around colonialism and racism, but around aspects of national identity and medievalism in particular, then um, if we're going to move forward with this debate, then we are all culpable. We're all part of the conversation. And um, I am unashamedly a person who, as an academic, I'm proud to defend memorials. But defending memorials may mean something very different to me than what it might mean to some of those that have been spouting about it. And as many heritage practitioners have made clear, it's a bit rich when we've had so many um damaging uh, and negative policies and practices implemented by recent UK governments on our historic environment, the lack of funding for museums and the heritage sector more generally, the, the, the dismissal and uh, denigration of academic degrees in archaeology, the erosion of adult education and so many other things of uh, inhibited learning about the historic environment, the subjects of archaeology, but also heritage studies and history is a bit rich to see people saying oh we should defend our history we can't erase history well i'm afraid um if you really will care about the historic environment you should be learning about it you should be engaging with the study of archaeology the study of monumentality and the dark and dangerous politics of their the erasing and the biographies of these memorials and the complex and challenging questions about what we do with them in future this is not about defending history by defending memorials. I defend memorials for a very different way, in a very different sense. I talk about defending memorials because I mean promoting and enhancing understanding of our complex history. And that may mean defending memorials in terms of conserving them, preserving them in place, but it also is about the conversations that may lead to their, their removal. And if that troubles you, well, I'm afraid you perhaps don't fully appreciate the complexities of what's been happening in our historic environment long before the current headlines of topple the racists, um, the, 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 the neglect of 
colonial history and black history and the the the, 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 the sort of whitewashing out of complex aspects of the, the country houses, the historic market towns that are in our landscape, the denial to talk about these aspects is palpable. Um, so there's plenty to say. And as I say, I can't address it all, but I hope you enjoy. I've, I've, I've edited these together now. I'm editing these uh, TikToks together in sequence. And in doing so, you'll see some repetition. But I hope that together they serve to give you a sort of a short encapsulation of some of the challenges we face. I'm not going to drive home a single choice. This is what we should do with all all memorials, should go or should be toppled or recontextualised. In fact, I think some of them are not fine, but I think that there's, they're, they're, there's integrity to their the story they tell. But I think it's a lot of it's going to come down to local choice, local campaigns, and a positive engagement with global narratives in those local communities, not by imposing a single change of names, change of memorialisation um, across the country, across the UK in the same way. But that that's my feeling. It's going to be a, a long, and this isn't a short conversation. I think we're going to be here in five, ten years still having these discussions. Uh, but I think it's an imp- therefore it's an important topic for me to address. So I shall shut up now and hand over to my other TikTok self uh, to take you through my 12 um, t- uh, top of the races, defend the memorials uh, videos and then an extra one on the end. Savor. As an archaeologist, I'm passionate to tell the stories of our historic environment from prehistory right the way up to the present day. And one of the aspects I'm most interested in is commemoration of the dead, uh, war memorials, uh, cemeteries, um, and also statues and street names and other aspects of memorial practice. So when I saw that the UK dimension of the BLM movement were thinking of uh, toppling the racists, of removing a whole series of statues and opening up a website where people can propose statues and, and places and names that are, are should be removed, obviously I thought, well, this is a radical change. We need to see where this goes. The, the historic environment is fluid and it's always shifting. So this is a, this is a moment to watch. But also I was concerned that maybe things would be erased, not in terms of erasing history, but erasing some of the more problematic uh, stories that are part of Britain's past. People are defending war memorials from attack. The PM says that uh, we shouldn't erase history. Top of the racist part two. Archaeologists and heritage practitioners are take heritage crime very seriously, whether it's the damage and destruction of listed buildings or indeed illicit metal detecting on private land or scheduled monuments. Another part of the backstory is that archaeologists and heritage practitioners often find themselves in controversy. Uh, we often find ourselves on different sides of the debate, some supporting and facilitating development of ancient sites and historic monuments, others working with protesters to support and defend monuments against damage and attack, whether it's by vandals or it's by development element of some kind, a new supermarket, a new housing development. All of that aside, archaeologists often are um, the scapegoat. We're treated as whatever we say, it's, it's derided by one side or the other. Now, that shouldn't stop us being an important voice. And if you care about the historic environment, there's many resources you can learn about, uh, the, the landscape in which we live and its uh, troubled and problematic past. You can also support the CBA, the Council for British Archaeology, by joining them. Top of the Racists, part three. I started by introducing you to the fact that archaeologists have complex and conflicted relationships with monuments, sometimes protecting and preserving them, sometimes calling for their removal or adaption, often a focus of controversy. I've also introduced the fact that monuments are not history, but they are part of the historic environment. Now, it seems a bit rich to some people to suddenly see a lot of academics saying, oh, we, we didn't like those monuments anyway and glad they're gone. And we've long argued that they were problematic when we are trying to foster engagement and love in a local landscapes, local environments. I think it's also very important that academics don't patronise people and, and accuse people of being racist or, or bigoted or ignorant just because they want to preserve monuments. People may not even like a statue or even care about the subject matter, but it's a familiar part of their landscape. Monuments have biographies and they may have been raised for one reason, but become important for local people for many other reasons. 
Topple the Racists Part 4. Now, I've introduced you to the fact that monuments and memorials are an important part of our historic environment and people care about them, often for irrational reasons. Sometimes they don't even know anything about the subject matter, but they are familiar parts of their local landscape and environment. They're emotive and people often only care about memorials when they're under threat. But all that aside... Let's look at the Top of the Races website for the list of memorials that people have merely suggested or started a campaign might be problematic because of the colonial, the slaving associated links of the subject. And we look through the list and we look at the range of difficult, horrific aspects of British history and its colonial heritage. But how many of them are war memorials? The press and some veterans seem to be out defending war memorials. Zero. No one wants to topple them. Topple the racists. Part five. Stay with me. So our previous videos, I've, I've identified that there's many challenges and controversies surrounding what we do with uh, public monuments. But I've also identified the fact that the topple the racist movement doesn't seem to be interested in war memorials. Yet the press seem in, in absolutely emphatic and some groups seem really keen on claiming that in the UK, war memorials are a focus of, of potential problems of being removed or graffitied. Now, with one notable exception I'll get to. Uh, this is a fabrication, as far as I can see. I've, I saw one news report where there was a demo that was going to happen in North Wales at a war memorial that has a Boer War, First World War and Second World War elements to it. But that was dispersed before it happened. Beyond that, with one exception, as I said, uh, the BLM, uh, top of the racist movement, is not interested in war memorials. So let's not make that the issue. Top of the racist part six. So I've suggested there's been a bit of a media frenzy and the far right have, have conjured this idea that the Black Lives Matter movement are focusing on war memorials in some regard. The only justification for this is very slender and it relates to the protests uh, to, uh, two, sad two weeks ago in London where the mass peaceful protest had uh, some, involved some small incidents of damage to the cenotaph in Whitehall and there um, a, a tiny bit of spray paint and one protester climbed up the side of the monument and tried to light one of the flags. Hardly any damage. I'm not condoning it, but it's, it, it's minimal and far less than some of the vandalism and some of the theft of metal off war memorials that we've seen across the UK in recent years. War memorials shouldn't be treated as sacrosanct and there's a lot of criticism we could level at their design and their com content, but they're not really a focus of what the Black Lives Matter protests are about. Topple the racist part seven. So if we're going to evaluate the potential shift in our cultural landscape, our historic environment through the topple the racist movement, then we need to actually look not at the war memorials, which are not their focus of interest, but at the memorials of slavers and those associated with the colonial regime in Britain's history, most of which date to the 16th to 19th century and are nothing to do with 20th century world wars. Looking in detail at the website, uh, there are arguments uh, made that are very compelling for some monuments to be removed. Others, it's more complicated. And as is always the way with history, there's different sides and different perspectives. But that shouldn't stop us looking at specific ones that we can uh, target and reflecting and discussing and engaging with the, the, the stories, the legacies of their memorial subjects and their position in today's society. And that's what I want to focus on in one particular example. Top of the Racists Part 8. So if we're going to evaluate this, we have to look at specific examples of Top of the Racists uh, campaigns. I want to focus on Eli Yale. Born in Boston, 1649. Died in London, 1721. Yale is a figure best known perhaps internationally for his association with the name of Yale University. Formerly Yale College, before that the Collegiate School of Connecticut, Yale had gifted them nine bales of goods, 417 books and a portrait of George I with which they raised money to support the growth of the college. They dedicated the name of a building after him and then the university. Yale had grown incredibly rich with his role in Madras for over 20 years with the East India Company. He was eventually deposed on the grounds of corruption uh, through his dealings with Madras traders, notably enforced the rule that uh, at least 10 slaves should be on every ship bound for Europe. 
Top of the Racist Part 9. So Eli Yale's link to Wrexham is twofold in principle. He lived at Place Grono on the Erdig estate, a house that was demolished in 1876, so you can't see it anymore. But his tomb chest still resides in a prominent position by the famous tower of St Giles Church. So his tomb is within the townscape of Wrexham and on its side it has a wonderful epitaph which I have to read to you. Born in America, in Europe bred, in Africa travelled and in Asia wed, where long he th lived and thrived in London dead. For much, some ill he did, so hope all's even, and that his soul through mercy's gone to heaven. You that survive and read this tale, take care, for this most certain exit to prepare, where blessed in peace the actions of the just smell sweet and blossom in the silent dust. Top of the Racist Part 10. And here I am outside Wrexham Museum. Wrexham is North Wales' largest town, but it's actually quite a small market town by any other standards. And there's a series of heritage boards, and one of them is to Eli Yale. There he is. And the Great Welsh American. And there's the epitaph, and there's some details excluding any reference to his slaving associations. And there's a photograph of his tomb, and I read the epitaph in the previous post. Now, this is what I think is referred to when protesters are, are talking about the erasure of any recognition or the lack of any recognition of the slaving associations of individuals from the 16th and 17th century. Topple the Racist, part 11. Now the Topple the Racist website identifies this pub, the Eli Yale, as the focus of the campaign to topple the racists and they are simply asking for the name of the pub to be changed. This pub is in the centre of Wrexham opposite the museum where in the last video I showed you there's a very celebratory uh, interpretation panel about Eli Yale. In 2017, a successful petition was raised to remove the uh, pub signboard, which showed a portrait of Yale with a slave kneeling beside him. No one wants to touch Yale's tomb. No one wants to remove his name from anything else. They simply want the name removed from this pub. And before you suggest this is a historic pub, it was an ice rink, cinema, furniture showroom, and it was a pub only from 1998. There are actually no historic buildings in Wrexham associated with Yale. Top of the Races Part 12. Now in this series of short videos I've tried to give you my academic perspective on the Top of the Races website and what they're asking of the British landscape in terms of the monuments and memorials. Using Yale's tomb as an example I've shown how he is celebrated in the local area and his slaving links are ignored and the Top of the Races movement are not trying to deface or remove a funerary monument in a consecrated setting. Instead, the Top of the Racist movement are asking for a pub name change, a Weatherspoons chain pub that was opened in only 1998. This is hardly a big ask for Wrexham and its environs to reflect on its slaving links and colonial history. The takeaway point for you as an academic archaeologist and an expert in memorialisation, this Top of the Racist moment is an opportunity not a threat. Actually in my final video I didn't address this point so I'll do in a separate video here to reflect on this this issue. In 1998 I have no insight into the rationale of the pub for giving its name Eli Yale. I strongly suspect it's not a flagrant disregard for the slaving history of the area or any attention at all. I suspect it was because they knew Yale had American links, he was from the town, his tomb was nearby and it's a kind of ye olde name where a chain pub can drop itself in to a local landscape and look kind of authentic. I think it's a parseness illusion. I think it has no other specific attempt to mock or deride anyone. And I think their response on the BBC website to the inquiry showed their flagrant ignorance of the issue or understanding who Yale was or why this would be an issue. I, I think the name will change, I hope. And I, there's a petition and I've signed it and I hope other people do to, on the top of the racist website to get it changed. For relaxing times, make it Archeodeath time.